We've all been in gunfights. That's just like part of who we were and we're moving forward now with all that stuff in our rear view. Look back on everything with a nostalgia of that was me then, how do I be better now? As a kid, I was the wild one. I remember specifically getting yelled at because I was jumping from tree to tree, 20 feet in the air, and I never really grew out of that. The primary reason that I got into the military was because I was missing a sense of brotherhood within my life. I was going to go do the hardest, dirtiest, roughest thing. After I finished my first deployment, I took what they call the sniper indoc, a week of no sleep, no food, don't ever stop. Like they just try and break you. So my deployment to Afghanistan started in 2010. The Sangin Valley was this breeding ground for IED technology. <laughs> It was a place that we had recently taken over from the British. The British had stopped patrolling and they set up these patrol bases because the IED threat was so great. Every single step that you took, you fear that you were gonna step on something. Within two weeks, we had five KIA and 10 wounded in action just from the IED factor. My brain has just like shut out the good stuff that's happened there and it's just filled with the people that we lost and the gunfights that we got in. A lot of my stories are kind of awful. Looking back, I was like, I can't believe I lived through it. Two, holy shit. Transitioning out of the military was a really quick turnaround. I was out of the Marine Corps. A month after that, I was enrolled in college. To be honest with you, I didn't handle that transition very well at all. It's difficult to go from being in a high risk, threatening environment to sitting in a classroom, staring at a window surrounded by 18 and 19 year olds. When I look back on that period of my life, having left my brothers, I call those days like the dark times because I wasn't in a great place mentally. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I remember one time I was just driving down the highway. I was by myself and I was just overwhelmed with this sense that I was going to die. Like right in that moment, I just knew I was going to die. there's no easy solution. Like you really need to have all this deep introspection into yourself and to like figure out how to live again. <laughs> I needed closure on the whole thing. So I took this multimedia class, which is basically like we had one semester put together one thing. I picked three friends who were in different places in Afghanistan with me. I forced them to relive the shitty moments of our life, and we did it together. A couple years later, it has two million views. I can't tell you how many messages I've gotten from people that are like, that thing saved me. It changed my life. And that revelation for me changed the whole being of who I am. I started writing again for this military combat blog, Funker 530. I was introduced to Evan and Evan offered me a job a couple weeks later. The great thing about Logan is it's truly authentic. He will continue to be one of the, the most influential people within Black Rifle Coffee as long as Black Rifle Coffee is around. As a sniper in the Marine Corps, the purpose of that role is to be a protector. And that's exactly the role I'm in now as the editor-in-chief. 
I have to have oversight onto everything that's going on within our sphere of content and media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, our social media publications. And there is no greater benefit to living a life than having that creative thing drive you. I wanna make you laugh. I wanna make you cry. I wanna make you feel inspired. And then you associate that with this drink that wakes you up. And that's what all of this encompasses. It's like, we're trying to wake people up. Life is amazing. Go live it. Enjoy it. Be positive about it. Even if you've gone through hell, it's okay. Because it's gonna make you better. Why I love Black Rifle so much is like, outside of the military, I got that brotherhood back. We're a family again. And coffee's great. I love it. But like, I needed that brotherhood. It's the fun part, it's the work part, it's the introspection into what we're doing. When you can lean on someone while someone's leaning on you, it makes life immensely easier. You can't do this whole life thing alone. And we're trying to be these shining examples for the veteran community, like I need that. And that's why I love it here.